Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And if you wish to see something of yours shown on this channel just drop me the Steam Workshop link somewhere and I'll eventually get round to it. So for today we're looking at a fairly large ship which is called the Hydra Heavy Cruiser which is this thing right here. And I totally did not choose this because it has the hideous purple glamour skin going straight through the middle. So there we go and if I just turn the camera around to here you'll get a better view of it. There we are. So pressing F10 and finding the Hydra, there it is. This ship weighs in at not 10,000 blocks, it's a little bit less than that. Yeah, this ship weighs in at 5,443 large blocks. It does use some of the DLC blocks from the decorative block DLC pack, such as the tables, the beds, the sofas and all that. But if you don't have the DLC pack, I can't see any reason why this ship still couldn't be used. You'll just have a lot of empty gaps inside the ship. So let's start by going around the outside. They'll take you on the tour of the interior. They'll fly it around and crash it into the poor little starting base over there, which is being overwatched by the ice cream moon titan. So the very front here, we have got two little points, which has four rocket launchers buried inside them, two on both sides. And they've got the Gatling turrets on the top and the bottom. If we come towards this bit here, where the start of the purple glamour skin, We've got a camera. Now this camera is how we're going to view dead forwards because the main cockpit has been buried inside the ship for maximum protection. Above the camera and below it, we've got a custom Gatling gun. Yeah, so it is simply a small block grid which has been attached via a rotor and it has nine Gatling guns strapped to it. And that's how it's been connected up. There we go. There's our advanced rotor onto a cargo container which has been connected up to that. So you can funnel ammunition from the main body of the ship into them if you need to. Now this purple strip goes straight through the ship all the way to the end of it. So it does have quite a colourful look to it despite using a lot of black. If I come around the side here, hopefully this is the side with the sun. We just simply see the lovely block work. And we come around to here where we have our first little thruster pod area. Which contains hydrogen thrusters. Because that is our main form of thrust on this ship so we're good for space and we're good for atmospheres. Above and below that we simply got a fancy silver part, little inlet part, little inset part even just above and below that but on the below part we've got some more hydrogen thrusters and you can see below there we've got even more but I'll come back to that when I go underneath it. Continuing along this side we've got more and more Gatling turrets and some more hydrogen thrusters which have been hidden away through these little passages which is quite neat. I'm always tempted to do stuff like that, but I'm always worried that they'll damage those blocks, but it seems to be okay. Above and below that, we've got some more fancy block work featuring a orange glamour skin. Ooh, that does look good, but does it outdo the purple? I think not. Yes, we've got these little raised knobbly parts going all the way along there to help break it up from being a just a plain blockish look. Then we come across to the rear of the ship. There's not too much going on on the side there. We've got once again the orange glamour skin and just some nice block work. But as we come around to the back, we start seeing some more pointy spiky parts where we've got our large hydrogen thrusters that be buried inside them. And there is where the orange and purple glamour skins meet. And then it continues along down under the ship. So above that, we've got a Gatling gun and some rocket turrets. Moving up here, we can see we've got little tiny pod parts with nothing in there. They're simply there for decoration. It's an absolute shame that the turret blocks cannot be placed on a single block part, if that makes sense, because you could just bury them inside there and make it look great. But unfortunately, they take up like a 3x3 grid, so they have to sit on top. Moving along here, we have got some catwalks, which have some unfinished spotlights under there for a little cylinder look to it. Yes, I did have to grind that away because I wasn't too sure what those blocks were, but they are unfinished spotlights with unfinished catwalks on top. If we continue along there, we've simply got some nice block work featuring the silver skin, purple glamour skin, and then we've got the black carbon fibre going along the side there. I did have to double check that to make sure I could see the carbon fibre texture. We just come along there, that's where I checked to see the spotlight. Then we move along to the front where we have our bridge, 
but not our main bridge, oh no. And that's where I had to get into the ship because I couldn't find the entrance. I'll show you it a little bit later, but the entrance is super sneaky on this ship. But yes, this is one of the areas where you could technically drive the ship. It's a nice open area with a lot of glass. Got some control seats, got lots of protection from intruders. Yes, that simply sits there. And as we move along the front, more and more hydrogen thrusters and some more turrets. And we're back at the very start. If I was to drop down and come underneath and just turn myself around, we can see the purple glamour skin continues along under there. And we've got some red spotlights, more turrets, some rocket launchers which have been placed underneath. So if you wanted to do a proper bombing run where you don't tilt down and face the enemies, you could just fly straight over the enemies and drop it on them. It's a very neat setup. Yes, we can see on the sides there even more hydrogen thrusters and then moving along to the back. More turrets, more hydrogen thrusters, but these ones are large hydrogen thrusters. Once again, we return with the unfinished catwalks and the unfinished spotlights. More turrets, more unfinished catwalks and spotlights, and even more hydrogen thrusters with a connector at the very back, which is how we're going to connect ourselves up to, say, an outpost or a base or whatever you wanted to do with that connector. And that about covers the hydras outside. It does look bloody fantastic, doesn't it? It's really well made. But now it's time for me to get into my character and show you how you get in. Because if you were to just fly around the outside, there's no doors anywhere, is there? This is what I spent at least 20 minutes trying to figure out before I actually start tearing down the ship. It's like, how do you get in to this ship? So I made a hole there to get inside, but actually, if we were to fly over to here, we've got little thrusters. We do have a doorway that lets us in. If I was to just quickly come over to the opposite side, there is nothing there. So it is on the left-hand side of the ship if you're sitting in the pilot seat. So coming down over to here, we have a little cat talk. Now, do be careful if the ship is moving because you could very easily get toasted by those thrusters. So opening up the door and coming inside, we've got double interior doors. There we go. And a, a third one to go inside the ship. Now, I will apologize because it's going to be very dark inside the ship due to the black paint that has been used. So I'll do my best to brighten this up much as possible. So inside here, we are instantly greeted by the gubbins of the ship. We've got the jump drive up there. We've got plenty of turrets. If one misses you, the rest are going to pummel you down into the ground. We can see we've got our large hydrogen thrusters there, which is just going to sit underneath. Lots of connectors everywhere. We've got some reactors up there, more turrets, more turrets down here. Lots of lights. And yes, it's just a rather fancy looking interior part. I do like it when stuff is set up like this because it looks like it's a proper working interior or mechanical and all that. Yes, we've got some lights that lead down the steps which will show you your way into the main body of the ship. We come past all the gyroscopes which are very much needed to turn the ship and plenty of programmable blocks here with nothing on them but you can set them up if you want to. This is how we're going to access some small reactors if you want to put some in there, some uranium in there even. But yes, we'll then come over to here past some hydrogen tanks, past our O2H2 generators up there with a little bit of ice inside them. We come to here. Two interior turrets guard the door, opening that up. We cannot open that until this door closes. Now there is a automatic script on here, or a timer block even, which will close the door up after a certain amount of time. So you don't have to. But we can walk into here, and we're now on the proper interior of our ship. So we have a turret over here and a bunch of cryopods, which to me screams, this is the prisoner bay. Yes, you're just going to get them into the ship, put them in the cryopods. If they try to escape, that turret is going to blast them. Above us, more gyroscopes and some more turrets. There's a lot of turrets on this ship. Yes, we have a ladder going up, which leads to the interior of the ship. Then we can walk around here, past all the confuddlement of stuff to a gravity generator. We then see some more stuff in here. If I was just to fly around here past all the tanks, yeah, you can sort of get a little bit of a better look at what's going on in this room. But dropping down here and going up the ladder, let's go up here, pretending I'm on going up the ladder properly. There is a hydrogen engine, I believe that could be an O2H2 generator. I always get those blocks mixed up. We have a doorway, which is once again an airlock door, which takes us 
with the interior, the proper interior this time, with a instant greetings of a turret. We have in this seat, not the proper controllable seat, oh no, this one is capable of controlling the guns, but not flying the seat. So you could have friends sitting in these seats if you wanted to have an additional person shooting while you are flying. So there is another seat that does the same thing. And then we have the flying seat, which is a little bit behind us. So we've got some LCD screens on there showing us our jump drive, cargoes used, hydrogen, oxygen reactors, batteries, and all that. Around us, we've got plenty of access points in the floor to go to the O2 H2 generators because we are a hydrogen ship. So we need to have plenty of easy access ways to put ice inside it. Coming through this door, we then have our medical bay to change our costume and to heal up on, and once again, more interior turrets. We have an armory there where we can put some stuff in there. This comes ready with a nice lot of ammunition, turrets, and tools. Walking around here, through this door, we have this very, very ominous room. It's like the disco room. You could just like party out in here. So there's nothing else going in here except this connector block. We then walk back through here, all the way through, then we can come through this door over here. We have a double door, once again, plenty of airlocks on here, and another ladder leading up to our secondary co-pilot seat. So over here is our top bridge, where we once again cannot fly the ship, but we can control the uh, turrets. So there are those firing at the front, and we can shoot the rockets. We could even just switch them off and shoot straight down for a bombing run. Moving around to here, we've got two control stations, which if you wanted to, you could set up to control a turret. Then we can walk through this door, and we'll just continue along through the ship. We once again have a medical bay here, so we've got plenty of ways to respawn on on this ship. We've got some more armories going along here, an air vent, nice little sound block. Through this door here, we come to our bedroom, where plenty of DLC beds are sitting. So you can have a nice lot of crew in here going to sleep. Coming around and through here, we then have our recreation area. We've got our kitchen, our planter, a little table to have your meeting and food on. We then have a corner seat for you to sit and look at this projected table, projecting a tiny little ship. Then coming around to here, we then have our toilets, which have been hidden away quite nicely thanks to this air vent. We go through here, nice lot of privacy while you're sitting on the toilet. Turning around and coming back through here, now we're going to come through a triple airlock door, just like the first door we came through. This is our main flight seat. So behind this, we've got some more turrets just to encourage your friends to actually do their job on your ship. We've got a cargo container there for you to put some more ice inside. A survival kit for a quick little recharge. Plenty of control seats with nothing on them, but you can set them up for turrets, like I said earlier. Some more LCD screens telling you everything you need to know about your ship. And then the final piece of the puzzle the actual flight seat. So if I come over to here and convert this to a ship, we can now fly this around. We then have number one on the tab, which will shoot the Gatling guns. Whoopsie, there we go. Shoot the Gatling guns at the front and deal a nice lot of damage. Number two is the four rockets at the front. If I was to just skip along a little bit and come to five and six, if I was to press number five, it would turn off the rockets altogether. Pressing it again would allow us to fire the front ones. Turning that off and turning on number six would then fire the rockets underneath for your bombing run. And then you can, if you want to, put them all on together for maximum destruction. Coming back to number three, we can then view forwards from our safe little flight seat. Not a very good view, very limited, but it's still good enough and saves you from flying in third person. Number four is to turn the hydrogen thrusters on and off at the very front. So these are your reverse thrusts, so we're going backwards now. And if I was to do that, we no longer have much thrust going back. So that's basically your cruise control. Five and six we've talked about, and number seven, which is the last thing, is your jump drives, and there's nothing else on this tab. So we can now go for a little flight test, and then we'll ram ourselves into the starting base. So pressing space to go up, we are quite slow. As you can see on the bottom right hand of my screen, this ship is bloody heavy. Yeah, so let's wait for that to stop and then move forwards. So going forwards, we are quite slow. So yes, we will have to make use of those rockets shooting straight down if we want to do a strafing run. Stopping is 
pretty good actually compared to going forwards and going backwards is still pretty slow. Going left is quite slow and going right is once again quite slow. Going down is faster than absolutely everything but that will be thanks to our weight. And going up like before is still faster than going forwards and backwards and last but not least wiggling my mouse around we got actually quite a good amount of control considering the actual flying speed of this it's bloody brilliant controls on it. So last thing to do will be to pummel this little base down here. So let's just start shooting some rockets into it. I think it might be a little bit too high. Nope, let's just keep firing it forwards. We can switch to the galling guns if we wanted to. There we go. Oh dear, the sim speed is dropping. We can come out of that, come into third person. Let's just switch on number six and go for a little bombing run. There we go, there's that. Just try and do this properly. Shooting straight down, there is our bombing run. Oh, reloading. Ah, we're going to miss it. Oh, that base, that base got lucky. Very lucky. Look at that curve down. That's quite interesting. Yes, now the final thing to do is ram it into a base. Is there a pirate base so I don't have to turn around? No, no, of course not. Let's now just go for a fly. I won't test the turrets on this because there's plenty of turrets on here to tear an opponent apart. So it'd be pretty redundant of me spawning in an enemy ship. But the ramming is always a brilliant test to see how strong it is. And what would happen... Oh god, I got out of the seat. If we took damage from the front, say we didn't stop in time, what would happen? Here we go, straight into the main body of the ship. Goodbye, little constructor. We hardly knew ye. Oh dear. And we're still going through. I think we're just going to plow straight through base. Let's try and reverse out. We've lost some rocket launchers. We seem to have lost quite a lot of thrust. But I think we're still in pretty good shape at the front there. I think we've got a brilliant ramming ship thanks to the point on the end. And there we go. We haven't lost that much. Like I said, we looks like we just lost the points. But that was very good for a ram considering we took out the basically the entire bottom of the main portion of that base. But anyway, that is it for the Hydra Heavy Cruiser. It will be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do, because it can be a lot of fun to play around with these fancy large ships, so you don't have to build one yourself. So thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.